Prior to version 8.3 on the ASA, the network address translation configuration from the command line perspective has been the same as the older PIX firewalls. If you're familiar with NAT configuration pre-version 8.3, you'll recognize that all of the NAT configuration is performed using the NAT, global, and static commands. To perform address translation on a particular host or an entire IP subnet on the firewall, you would simply specify those IP addresses when using the NAT global or static command. Let's take a look at an example of an ASA NAT configuration from version 8.2, where a subnet on the inside interface of the firewall is being port address translated to the outside interface of the ASA. If you've used an ASA firewall before, this will probably look familiar. In the example you see here, we're using the NAT command and specifying that we want to perform address translation on a subnet behind the inside interface. We're using NAT ID 1, and we're specifying that the 10.0.0.0/24 network is going to be the range of IP addresses we want to perform address translation on. The next line is the global command, where we'll specify the global or mapped IP address that we want to translate those hosts to. We specify the outside interface, we specify the same NAT ID, and in this case, we're using the outside interface IP as the global or mapped IP address. Now let's take a look at what this configuration would look like in version 8.3. 8.3 introduced the notion of a network object to the configuration, where you can define a single host, a range of IPs, or an IP subnet. It is within this object's definition that the NAT is configured. In version 8.3, this configuration is called AutoNAT. Notice that we entered the NAT command within the object definition. So, this configuration tells the firewall how to perform address translation on this specific object, which in this case is my inside network. If we look at the running configuration of the firewall, you'll see that the ASA splits the object configuration into two parts. The first defines the object's subnet, and the second identifies the NAT configuration for the object. So, the object will appear twice in the configuration. In version 8.3, the static and global commands are gone. All NAT configuration is done with the NAT command. In this case, we've specified how the ASA will translate the source IP address in the IP packet for the network subnet when traversing from the local interface, or the inside interface, to the mapped interface, or the outside interface. We've also stated that this is dynamic NAT, and we're going to translate all of the hosts to the interface IP address of the firewall by using port address translation. Now let's take a look at our sample network diagram. Here we have an ASA with three interfaces, the inside, where our users live, the DMZ, where we have some servers, and an outside interface, which faces the internet. We've already configured AutoNAT for the inside net object, so that inside users are translated to the outside IP address of the firewall in order to provide internet connectivity for them. Next, let's specify a translation so that the server in the DMZ is statically translated to a global IP on the outside of the ASA. In this case, we'll translate the DMZ server 192.168.1.23 to the global IP address 209.165.201.28. Let's go to our ASA. First, we need to define an object for this server. We'll call it DMZ-WebServer. Then, we'll specify a particular host IP for the server. Finally, we'll configure the NAT command within the object to provide a static one-to-one -one mapping for the outside or mapped interface. Now users on the internet can send packets to the global IP address of 209.165.201.28, and the ASA will provide translation and change the destination IP address in the packet to the local 192.168.1.23 server IP address on the DMZ. Note that the ASA still has to be explicitly configured to allow inbound access using the access list and access group commands. That hasn't changed in version 8.3. One thing to note, in version 8.3, the access list permitting the inbound access needs to specify the local or real IP address and not the global IP address of the server in the access list applied inbound on the outside interface. We call this feature real IP, and this is a change from pre-8.3 versions. Now let's take a look at the NAT configuration on the ASA. A good way to see the configuration for NAT is with the show run object and show run NAT commands. That will display the object definitions and then the NAT configurations applied within those objects. Another good command is the show NAT command. That will display the NAT table of the ASA. In this case, we see our two entries. The first is the static translation for our DMZ server, and the second for the dynamic PAT translation for our inside users to access the internet outbound. The ASA will perform a top-down search of the NAT table to determine how to translate a packet when it receives a packet inbound. A new feature of 8.3 is that you can specify the translation for an object between multiple interfaces in just one line. 
For example, if we wanted the ASA to perform address translation for our DMZ server on any mapped interface of the ASA, then we could just use the any keyword in the NAT command. For example, Now when hosts on any interface of the firewall need to access the server, they'll connect directly to the mapped IP of 209.165.201.28. So our hosts on the inside interface could access that mapped IP directly and it, they would have access to the server. Here's another common example where we have two servers on the DMZ hosting different services, one an FTP server and one a web server. We can translate both of these DMZ servers to the same outside global mapped IP if we use PAT port address translation to specify the port translation. In this case, we'll use the outside interface of the ASA as the mapped IP. First, we create an object for the web server and apply a NAT configuration to the object, specifying that the ASA should perform a static translation from the DMZ interface to the outside interface, with the outside interface as the mapped IP. Then we specify the local and mapped service ports, which in this case are both www or port 80 since we're not changing the port in the translation. After doing that for the web server, we'll do the same for our FTP server. So far we've defined objects and specified how to translate their source IPs when they traverse certain interfaces of the ASA. However, when using AutoNAT, you can't specify that the ASA should only perform translation when a host accesses certain destinations, and you can't specify how the ASA might change the destination of the packet. To perform either of these configuration tasks, you need to use the manual NAT, or also called twice NAT. Manual NAT is not configured under an object's definition. Instead, it's configured separately in the configuration and takes objects as arguments to specify the translation. Let's take a look at an example. Looking back at our diagram, let's say that whenever internal users on the inside interface access www.cisco.com, the ASA should translate their source address to 209.165.201.10. This differs from when they access any other website on the internet when they should be translated to the outside interface IP of 209.165.201.1. To accomplish this, we first need to create an object for each argument in the NAT command, one for the translated IP that we want to translate the users to, one for the IP address of cisco.com, and we already have one for the inside user subnet. Then to configure the manual NAT entry, we'll add it in the base configuration of the ASA and not under an object. Now let's take a closer look at the manual NAT statement we just entered. The NAT statement is in the base configuration of the ASA, and it specifies that we're going to provide translation from the real interface of the inside to the mapped interface of the outside. In this case, we're going to translate the source of the packet, and we're going to do dynamic port address translation when the source IP address in the packet matches the inside net object, and we're going to translate it to the global IP specified in the translated IP object. Remember, with manual NAT, you can specify the destination of the IP packet that you want to match, and that's why we have cisco.com specified as our destination IP. Also with manual NAT, you can optionally choose how to translate the destination IP address of the packet as well as the source. But in this case, we don't want to change the destination IP address of the packet, so we simply list cisco.com twice. If we had wanted to change the destination IP address in the packet when packets were destined to cisco.com, we would have changed one of these objects to the object that indicated the destination IP that we wanted to translate the packet to. 
Now that we have the NAT configuration applied to the ASA, let's use the ASA's built-in packet tracer utility to inject a simulated packet through the inside interface of the firewall and send it to cisco.com and then another IP address to see how the firewall is going to translate the packets differently. I'm going to specify that we're going to send the packet through the firewall input on the inside interface source from 10.0.0.40. I'm going to give it an arbitrary TCP source port. I'm going to specify that it's going to be destined to cisco.com and I'm going to give it destination port of 80. Once I hit enter this will inject that packet through the firewall and it'll show us the exact actions that the ASA is taking. I can go through the different phases showing exactly what's happening and then you can see that phase 5 NAT is showing that it's going to match our translation that we specified for packets destined to cisco.com and we're going to translate that packet to 209.165.201.10. Now let's look at see how the firewall is going to treat a packet destined to some other IP address. All I'm going to do is change this from .25 to 28 so it should not match our manual NAT rule and it should fall back to the auto NAT rule that we added for the object. Here you can see that this different packet that's not destined to cisco.com is matching the object NAT entry that we added for the inside NAT users and we're translating that to a different IP address. In our final example, we'll show another common case. Often if there is a VPN tunnel between the ASA and some other device, the ASA will be configured to not translate traffic sent over the tunnel to certain destinations. We call this policy NAT exemption. In our example, imagine the ASA has a VPN tunnel established to a branch office, and we want to configure it so it does not translate any IP packet sourced from the internal network that is destined to our remote VPN subnets. In this case, our remote VPN subnets are the 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4, and 10.5 Class B networks. Again, since we want the ASA to make a NAT decision by taking into account the destination IP address of the packet, we can't use auto NAT, so we'll have to use manual NAT. And remember, for manual NAT, we must define objects for the source and destinations that we specify in the NAT statement. So, we'll need to create an object for the remote VPN subnet. In this case, we'll simply create the object and specify a range of IP addresses that define our remote VPN subnets. Remember, we don't want to translate any packets that are destined to the remote IP subnet. So, we'll add a manual NAT entry that simply tells the ASA to maintain the inside network IP address when accessing the remote VPN subnets. Now when inside users access remote hosts across a VPN, their packets will go across the VPN tunnel without any translation. The NAT configuration examples that we used today were very basic and were designed to introduce you to the new NAT configuration style in ASA version 8.3. For more information on configuring NAT for the firewalls, please refer to the ASA 8.3 command line configuration guide which should be linked at the bottom of this document. Also, it should be noted that the ASDM, or the GUI interface of the ASA, has a more simplified view of the NAT configuration. It displays it in a table format, and some users might prefer editing the NAT uh, configuration of the firewall from that GUI interface over the command line.